is okay. So we have a dollar bill, we have a five dollar bill, we got a ten dollar bill, twenty dollar bill, yada yada yada. If there was a new dollar bill that had your face on it, what bill would that be and why? But you can also replace any of the bills that already exist and you can also use coins if you want. Wow, I love this question. Okay. <laughs> so my face can replace any of those and which one and why? You can replace them or you can like have a new dollar bill. So like a $2 bill, a $3 bill. Oh my God, wow. Um, Honestly, <laughs> I would pick the $5 bill. And the reason for that is because I feel like everyone kind of has a five here or there. So like my face would pop up here or there, but it's not like a one where everyone has singles everywhere. So oh, like you're special. Yeah, like a little yeah. special, but it's like everyone has them, but you kind of don't have them at the same time. You know what's funny? I, cause I literally was making these questions this morning while I was drinking coffee and I was like, well, what would I do? I was going to say the $5 bill too, because I feel like it's kind of an underrated, underrated bill. Oh my God, it's so underrated, the $5 bill. Cause everyone's like, oh, here's a 20, here's a 20. I'm like, what about the fives? You can't get the 20 without the five. So I'm picking a point. And if you break a 20, there's got bound to be a five in there somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So put me on a five and you'll see me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like instrumental thing that your parents told you or taught you about like your work ethic or just anything in general that you've taken thus far in your life they've told me since the day I was born that anything you want in life you have to work for it and that that comes with anything not just materialistic things but any goal that you have in life any type of happiness that you want to see in life you really have to work for it um, that plays a part when you want something materialistic. I had to work my butt off to get a lot of the things that I've wanted and nothing was ever handed to us. That's not how I was raised at all. Um, even with nursing. Yeah, it was challenging, but they always taught me if you want, you want to become a nurse, right, Natalie? And I'd always say yes. And they're like, then work for it. Like everything you want, nothing in life is free. Nothing worth having is easy at all. So they've always just taught me that since the beginning since the, I was so young. So growing up with that type of mindset and that type of work ethic, my siblings and I can all say it really like, it kind of set you one step above the people that are your age that, yeah. yeah, maybe they're handed stuff a little more often or they're like, oh, if I do this, I can like cheat my way through this. Don't cheat your way through anything. Just start from the bottom. Everyone starts at the bottom. And then at some point you'll work your way up. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's really good advice see i i don't know if you're the same way as me but like i just can't cut corners when i try to do anything like it just makes me feel so bad yes like, it's, like, it, it's just like i it's just not in my nature and i'm sure you can probably agree on that like it's just not it doesn't there's no satisfaction in cutting corners or cheating or anything like that like it, there's so much satisfaction in working hard enough and then getting rewarded for the hard work that you do. Absolutely. And something as small as like people trying to like cheat in school. And I would always be like, why don't we just study for the exam and then we can all pass it. But it's, it's rewarding because when yeah. you pass something, whether it be school or something in life and you didn't cheat and you worked your way there, it is just, it's so much more rewarding than just being handed something like handed a grade or handed something materialistic. Like you worked for that. And that's yeah. so important. Yeah. That's something that like our, our mom has taught us as well. And I know my mom tells this story all the time, D, but like she, Danielle started dog walking. Like when she was like 10 for, for I remember. The, yeah. For yes. one of the, the dogs on the street and she would get like 10 bucks a week or whatever, but she saved up enough money. Do you want to tell the story D? No, you, no. you, you go ahead. <laughs> Well, she saved up enough money one time and like we were really big into video games when we were younger. So we went to like GameStop or whatever and she bought like, I think it was Call of Duty or Gears of War or one of those uh -oh. games that are not meant for children. And she was like, again, like 10 or 12. She go, gets the game. She goes to the cash register. The, the cashier behind the thing is like, that's like $60. And she handed the man $60 in cash. And he was like, what? 
And mom was like, she earned that, she earned that money. She earned she, it by working. She earned yeah. the money walking those dogs. Walking those dogs. But like, that's a very, I think, and like Danielle said, we talked about this before, but that's such a, I think that's the most important thing to teach your kids is the work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it'll help you throughout your whole life. Like somebody like, I'm, I see my brother out the window right now. So somebody like him, for example, you know, my brother. So he's, he's, a, he's lives a very interesting lifestyle, but um, he worked his butt off, always doing side jobs here and there. Um, he has his whole motocross career as well, but um, he worked his butt off and he just started building his own house in Jackson on it's a huge piece of land in total. I think it's, I could be wrong. Don't, he's going to quote me on this, but I don't know. It's like 50 something acres in Jackson. So he's building his own house, but a lot of rumors as soon as he bought it already started, unfortunately with him and my family and everyone's like, they asked me a lot of people and they're like, well, how much did your parents pay for that? And I said, oh, oh no. shut up people. And I said, brother paid for it. they're like he don't he doesn't pay for that with his career I said oh yeah he probably makes more than you do doing whatever the hell you do so it's just you have to work for what you want in life you really okay, do and also to vouch for your brother your brother has been doing motocross for ev- like his entire life since he was a child and his you know entire life oh they love to talk but that's a perfect example it's all about the work ethic and he's a great example so he he really works for what he wanted and it's nice to see and it's inspiring to myself and my sisters and my parents as well, the whole family, to see him work his whole life for what he wanted and he's finally achieving, like he's building his home, own home. I'm like, wow. That's so, crazy. Wait, can you like talk about that growing up? Because you guys used to go to like competitions like every week and you have yeah, yeah. to camera real quick. I don't know if I could do that on Zoom. Can I? I yes, I can. Here. Again, I remember. There it is. Here. Yeah. I remember going to your house and it was there and it was like really cool. And then we mean like we went to one of his competitions one time. It was yes. fun. He did that. So he's been racing since he was eight, I believe. Um, but he's done it his whole life. So obviously when we were all younger and we were all kids, we always used to, that's when we just had my dad's truck in the trailer. So like we all pack in the truck, all six of us. And we'd, drive to all of his races but the, obviously the older we kept getting um we started going to the races a lot less for no other reason besides you know life went on we all start to have our own separate lives and stuff um but it'll always be an interest that we all have like he has one that's coming up um that we're all planning on going to as well so it's it's an interesting lifestyle but I feel like without racing like racing kind of like makes up what our family is like people know us as like the racing family it sounds funny but you know you guys know us yeah so it's definitely interesting it's an interesting lifestyle but it's interesting to see how he lives it now like if you saw his whole house that he's building like it's all it's like relevant to his lifestyle like majority of the house I'll send you guys a picture after this but majority of his house is a garage it's the garage and then the house. <laughs> so, but that's his lifestyle. He needs the garage. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, uh, it's a cool lifestyle. Your online store in the first place. I always because- have an absolutely no I've always had an interest in selling stuff and I come from a family who's all they all have a business background and then there's me who has a medical background but um all of them in some aspect have a business background my oldest sister Alexis is business my parents are business brother in a sense is business and then Jack and I are medical but um I I've like grown up around business and the aspect of selling things and making a profit, whether it be my parents selling a house, my mom's a real estate agent selling a house or my brother selling a piece of machinery. I don't know, but um, it's always just been in my blood. I love selling stuff. I love the reward of either hand making something and selling it to someone or the aspect of buying and selling because one man's trash is another man's treasure the way I look at it. So um, I just, I loved it. I kind of did. I, so I started it when I was in nursing school and I still do have it, but I think my last two semesters of school got a little hectic and I tried to like put my blinders on and I was like, wait a second, you need to focus on school. That is 
your career, that is your life. You need to put the hobby of the store on the side for just a second, which is what I've done. So the past few months, I've kind of put it on the back burner just until I get my license and I jumpstart my nursing career, but I started it and it was just great. So at first it was all handmade products. It was like, you know, I think you've seen on social media. No, I was going to say like, I was telling Danielle too, it was like the first part when you launched it, you were doing a lot of more like home decor stuff. And that yes. was a lot of stuff where you were making it, which again, I do not know how you were doing that because you <laughs> probably had no time. I had no time. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Between studying and selling stuff and making stuff, I literally had time for nothing. I was I was in my own world. But um, the first half, I handmade everything and it was so much fun, but it was time consuming. And I realized if I want to keep doing this, even if it's just something on the side, not something like taking over my whole nursing career, but just something on the side for fun. I can't be me personally. I don't have enough time to be hand making stuff as much as I was, but, um, I switched gears a little bit and I started selling jewelry. So it is something that I buy. People thought I was making it. I'm like, I don't know how to make, it. I'm not that good. I don't know. You were making it too. And I was like, wow. Cause then I saw a bunch of your videos and you have a bunch of inventory. So how, 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 how does that work? That's my question. So the way that that works is I look at styles online. I see what the newest trend is. Um, the newest one, I'm sure you've seen, but like a lot of girls were so into like the butterflies and stuff. And that's still a trend. That's still, it, it's cute. Yeah. So I went and I searched for stuff and I looked for a mix of things so that everyone could wear it. Necklaces, bracelets, anklets, like all that stuff. And then I basically buy that and I repackage it myself so that it's custom to my company and to myself. And I change up the jewelry a little bit because I don't want to sell it exactly how it comes because that's no fun. So I change it up a bit and then I sell it. I promote it. Um, my biggest promotion came from TikTok actually, because I do have one and I like promoted it on there. And then yeah. Instagram. So social media is the biggest advertisement source that I do use. Well, I was going to ask you, how do you, how does social media play a role in um, promoting stuff? Cause I feel like that's the best way to promote nowadays. Oh my God, the best way. But I've always, my mom always told me, she's like, you could be selling a potato, but as long as it's packaged nicely and promoted well, you'll sell it. And she's absolutely right. Like even it's something as simple as like a bracelet or like an anklet. That's very simple. It's just a gold chain. If you advertise that gold chain, like it is the best gold chain in the world, people will buy it. They will. That's true. Yeah. So it's, I started that. Um, when did I start it? The whole company, maybe like two years ago. And then I put it on hold when I graduated school and then I started it and now it's on hold again. So I go in and out with it, but I know one day I want it to be something bigger than it is. But, you know, you have to start small first and see how you like it. Well, I mean, you've been very successful in the past two years, though. So thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, I still I have all. I don't know how you do it, but I give you. I props. don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I still have all the material. I just it's on hold right now until I get my license because I'm focused on that. But then I'm, I need to sell all the stuff because I still all have it. So then I'll go from there. So did you buy like your inventory in bulk is that how that would work yeah that's and just try to make profit and, that and make profit and all that stuff yeah there's a lot of factors that go into it so you have to i i like you have to buy it in a certain amount but you can't go overboard and be like yeah my business is gonna boom and i need a million of these no absolutely not you're still small and new so you need to buy them in bulk but also not too many mm -hmm. um you need to put in a factor of how much this is more. I told you I suck at math, but this is the type of math that I'm actually good at because it's simple. But um, you need to think about how much you're buying the product for, but it's not just the product because you can't be like, oh, I'm buying it for this, selling it for this. I'm making this. No, because you're buying it. You're shipping it in a bag. So you have to put the price on that. You're shipping it with the label. What else? What else? I put like stickers in there, candy in there, a bunch of other junk in there to make it look great when you somebody opens it but you have to put all that into a factor and then what do you make after all of that's into it so it's one of those right. things that it takes a lot of thought so it's kind of hard to you have to like dig for stuff the way that I buy it because you can't just go buying something for 50 and selling it for 50 it doesn't work that way so you have to dig a little bit but I love it 
That's good. I want the 1998 um, necklace. I'll send you. I have them. They're so cute. I know. I was like, they're cute. That's so exciting. And then you're on Etsy, right? I, I'm actually not on Etsy anymore. So I have my own website because I steered away from Etsy. Um, the reason being because they they took a certain amount out of every sale you made and having your own website, you that doesn't happen. So I didn't like that. I was like, I'm working so hard. That's when I was making the handmade stuff. And every time I sold something, they would take a couple dollars out of it. But even if it's a couple dollars, I was like, this is adding up with all of the, yeah. So I, I made my own website. It's, um, Shopify. That's the source that I use, but it's just called shopnatalie.com. But, um, it's a Shopify account and it's only like, what, like 30 bucks a month or something, but you, you have your own name. And every time you make a sale, no one comes out of it. So it is, it's more worth it to have a website. Say, say the name of your website again. It's called shopnatalie.com. So it's, it's not like S H O P it's S H O P P E because shop was taken. So I'm like, I guess I'll be fancy and add the two P's and the E, but so it's just called shopnatalie.com. 